Hi, this is Brett Ingram, award-winning entrepreneur. And today, I want to share with you 10 ways for entrepreneurs to grow their network. Okay, so I'm going to make an admission and a confession right here out of the gate. I'm not a great networker. It doesn't really come natural for me. It's funny because I do a podcast and I really enjoy actually talking with people, but I'm not the most natural networker. I'm not usually the guy in the room that's connecting everybody else. I've known people who are like that and sort of an envious at times because I know the value of it, but it's not natural for me, but I did really grasp the understanding of the value of it because when I was building my business in digital marketing and I was working sort of on my own, I knew a lot of people in the industry through Skype and through other connections and stuff, but didn't really get to know them personally. And somebody had sort of pushed me to go to uh, a live event that we were having. And when we did, one of the things that I noticed that was really dramatic for me was I noticed not in terms of the content or the presentations that were going on on stage, but rather what was happening at the back of the room, what was happening outside in the hall, what was happening at the bar in after hours and happy hour and stuff, where all these people that don't get a lot a chance to spend a lot of time together were spending time together talking through their businesses and just listening to other people. I could hear them sharing ideas and then somebody else would offer a suggestion or bounce an idea off of that. And I noticed it was a very sort of collaborative experience. But the other thing that I noticed was for the people that I met and that I had meaningful conversations with, our relationships seemed to be more significant once I got back to my own office and I was by myself again. Then when I reached out to them on Skype or I reached out to them to connect, they were far more likely to spend the time to connect back than they were when I was just a name behind an email. And so there's a lot of value in networking, particularly when we get into a situation where we're facing a problem or a challenge that we want to be able to overcome, or even to identify new opportunities. Because oftentimes, other people are trying things. And if we're limited to our own sphere of experience of what we're trying, then we're going to see what works and what doesn't work for us personally. But we're losing out on the collective experience of a network where all of them could be trying different things, creating best practices, and we could borrow them from each other. It's super powerful. And it's a, it's a very, very important lesson I wish I had actually learned earlier. Because also when I've had problems or challenges in my business and I was struggling, when I had people I could reach out to, just to get sort of another voice or another opinion on something, they could let me know whether I was overreacting, whether I was panicking, whether what I was seeing was industry-wide or just specific to my business and my situation. So there's value of it in a lot of different ways. Growing your network is a crucial aspect of entrepreneurship because it's going to open doors to new opportunities, partnerships, advice, and resources. And not only for the perspective of what we can get from it, but also the perspective of what we can offer and give. When we network and we build the relationships with other people and we are able to help them, that feels really good too. And it creates really strong bonds between you know, us and our, our network. And so what I wanna do is share 10 resources that entrepreneurs can utilize to grow their network. Now, some of these are gonna be things that maybe you've even heard of. But if you aren't actively doing them, then it's super important that you start taking an active role in growing your network. And I'll explain why after we go through the 10. So the first is LinkedIn. Now, look, I'm going to be the first to admit it. If you go to my LinkedIn page as the day of the shooting, you're going to say, what are you talking about? You don't even have a LinkedIn. I was not really on any social media. All of my networking and relationship building was behind the scenes, live events, things like that. And to be honest with you, as I mentioned to start, I wasn't very good at it. It's not a strength of mine. It's not a natural inclination. So I had to kind of force myself to do it. But I am building that up. And I can tell you that if you go look at LinkedIn six months from now, you'll see it's going to be very different. I've started to build up my other socials and I'm doing exactly the same thing there. 
Um, I'm just trying to get the best practices down so I do it the right way. But LinkedIn, from everything I've heard, everything I've seen, and everything I know, it's the premier professional networking platform. So it's fantastic above and beyond just sharing quotes and this and that for connecting with other people that are all on there for the express purpose of connecting to each other in a business environment, in a business context. So it's automatically built in with the purpose of being able to build a network. It allows us to connect with other professionals, join industry specific groups, and participate in discussions so you never know what kind of advice you could get, what kind of help you can get, what sort of joint venture partnerships you could get out of there, and also how you might be able to help other people solve their issues as well. A second avenue or second thing that we can do is go to local networking events. Now, you might be saying, well, okay, I could do this, but I'm not, I don't have a local business, I have an online business. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is the most interesting thing about the synergy of networking and having a network of people is that oftentimes the biggest ahas, the biggest sort of tactics and strategies that you'll get that you can apply to your own business actually come from other business owners, even in other industries. It's something that wasn't really thought of. It's why we don't think about it. And when we see somebody else doing it, we say, wow, you know, that could really work for what I'm doing. And so if we connect with people in a local environment, What's nice about that is it's person to person, which is always 100% of the time more powerful than phone, internet, Zoom, anything else. When we meet with people in person, we also get to know people, we get to know their challenges, their industries, everything else. And it also provides us opportunities, again, for synergy, for working together. Even if we have an online business, if we network with a bunch of local businesses, they might be able to drive us business, we might be able to drive them business, there's a variety of other benefits to that. Also, it's very easy because if it's local, it's not difficult. It's not, we don't need to buy plane tickets and hotel rooms to go to local events. It's often just a couple hours, you know, once a week or once a month, we can go to one of these events or meetups and it can help us connect with other people that are really valuable. The other thing that's really important to understand about a network like that is even if the immediate people we meet aren't the ones that are going to be able to help us, or that we're even going to need help from us, the fact is we then tap into their networks and they tap into ours. So it expands our frame of reference. So websites like meetup.com and Eventbrite and stuff like that can show us great resources to find relevant events that we could attend. Another um, valuable place um, to actually build a network is at industry conferences and trade shows. I can tell you firsthand, this is fantastic. I was very resistant to going to my very first conference for the digital marketing industry. A bunch of the guys in my industry were going and they were like, oh, you really should go. Events are the best. What I'm thinking to myself is this is a waste of time. I have to buy a plane ticket. I got to get hotel rooms. It's time away from my business. I'm going to go down there and do what? Like I'm going to hang around with other people. They've got some entertainment and stuff. There's some talks that people are going to be giving on stage, but I don't really need the content. I was dead wrong. The fact of the matter is I made more meaningful connections in that first one event I went to and I was hooked immediately because you see all these other people and guess what? They're all there for the same reason. So you're all in the same boat together. You're all in an environment where you're trying to help each other. And this happened both in open door sessions where someone was presenting from stage and then somebody would stand up and say, well, you know, I have this business and I have this challenge and boom, all of a sudden all these people would start offering suggestions and say, oh, let's talk offline after. I've got some things that might be able to help you. I've seen partnerships and relationships be forged literally right before my eyes. I've also had an opportunity to connect with other people and forge JV relationships. In fact, um, I had worked with a partner on product launches for three years. And where I met him was actually at a conference. He flew in from, um, from the UK. I was from the United States. We met up there. We spent the weekend together chatting. We found that we had a lot in common in terms of the way that we saw products and product launches. 
So we decided to work together. It was the start of a great and profitable relationship for three years off of one trade show or conference that I went to. Absolutely worth their weight in gold. It's worth going to for sure to build a network. And then those are people that you want to integrate into your Rolodex. The key is, by the way, with all this stuff that I'm talking about, is that you actually have actionable steps when you come out. If you go to one of these things, you have to convince yourself on the way in that you're going to push yourself out of your comfort zone and meet people. That is the whole point. And then the key to this is when you get back to the office, back to reality, you reach out to, for to forge that connection even stronger. Hey, we met a couple days ago at the trade show, had an awesome time, looking forward to see how we could help each other. Let me know if there's anything that you need or any ideas you want to bounce off me. And if you're okay with it, I'll do the same. Boom. You just cemented that connection. And now, anytime you have an open door to reach out to them, they have an open door to reach out to you. And instead of it just being a fun weekend that then disappears into the ether, you now have something tangible from that. And you do that with every contact that you make. Trade business cards at the moment, but collecting business cards is not the goal. The goal is to actually establish those relationships, which you then harden once you get back. It's a great place to meet potential partners, customers, mentors. You know, that's a very uh, sort of understated idea about this as well. We'll get into that more in a minute. But you also get to stay updated on the latest trends and technologies, and you get to see what other people are doing. If it's an industry event like mine, where other marketers go up and pitch from the stage, you can see what techniques they're using, see what kind of products they're creating, and it gives you ideas for what you want to do forward. Another great idea for networking, and it's sort of underutilized and, and sort of underestimated, is co-working spaces. You know, if you work out of your house, that's fine. And if that's all that's in your budget, that's fine. But co-working spaces you can get for actually very cheap. It gives you a physical address, so your business looks a little more legitimate. But at the same time, you're in a space that everybody's sharing. And guess what? We're all in the same boat because none of us have a full-time office space. If we did, we wouldn't need it. So they could be from every different industry, but oftentimes in a co-working space, there are multiple offices, a conference room, and uh, usually administrative services, and they're all shared by... 5, 10, 20, 50, 100 different businesses. It's a great opportunity to get to know other business owners. And again, you have a lot of stuff in common already because you're sharing the co-working space. So it isn't just about sharing office space. It's a community of entrepreneurs. Most of them are new or trying to grow. Sometimes they're freelancers, so they might have skills that you can leverage or get for cheap for the stuff that you need. And some of them are startups. You can learn from them. How'd you do your financing? How'd you do this? How'd you do that? You can work together and maybe have some shared synergies or maybe pool your resources to invest in some technology or whatever that you might need. Many co-working space, spaces also host networking events, workshops, and social gatherings. So those are awesome for being able to get to know people. Then if we want to switch to sort of the online world, there's online forums and communities. So there are plenty of online forums. Even though forums seem old school, the fact of the matter is there's still a lot of people online in Facebook groups, online forums, communities. If you just do a search for whatever your industry is and forum or group or network or whatever, it'll show you a list of resources that you can go on. You can go right on Facebook and type it in. Group, you know, look under groups and do a search for, for whatever industry that you're in. Find like-minded people with similar situations. And again, they don't have to be in your industry. Sometimes the most synergies can come from places outside, but it makes the most sense to start with people either close to you geographically or close to you in terms of your industry and your business, or at least a related industry or business. And then you can start to connect with peers worldwide because it's online. So you aren't limited to just where you are. So websites like Reddit has a very active forum style community where people respond to threads all the time. There are tons of subreddits about all different industries and businesses. Quora and specific industry forums are great places to start. Then another resource that's widely underutilized, but again, you instantly have something in common with is if you went to high school or college, you have alumni networks. 
alumni networks can be fantastic because while the number of people in that network that actually uh, might be entrepreneurs might be smaller, it's you have something instantly in common. So there's instant synergy, there's instant sort of recognition and something that you could talk about and build on. Because if you went to the same school, you went to the same college, the alumni network can be a valuable resource. They always have a place and a way for you to connect with other people from that community. And usually you could search for what people's careers are, you can find out what they're doing. You can make some some uh, alumni networks have a ability to post. So you can post that you're an entrepreneur, you're looking for other people that are business owners or entrepreneurs within the alumni network and hoping to connect and share some synergies there. And you all have that common educational background. So there's instant connection there. And it's a really smart way to be able to be there. Now this sort of overlaps, but the next thing is social media groups. Right, so we talked about Facebook, but you can also look on Twitter or X or whatever they're calling it these days and other social media platforms because a lot of times they have groups and communities where entrepreneurs share experiences, ask for advice, and make connections. So it's very easy. It's also something that's you know commonly used. Another great place to go for startups and for us entrepreneurs and, and small companies that are trying to grow is AngelList. It's a platform for startups. It connects entrepreneurs with investors. So it's great for financing and looking into how to finance your business, but also it allows startups to network with each other and find potential employees. So it isn't just about, well, I don't need financing, so I don't really need that. Instead, you could go on there and network with other people. And again, because you're on the same platform, you automatically have something in common and that is very powerful for building that initial connection that then you can leverage and see where there are synergies, what other companies and entrepreneurs you can work with. And you might even be able to partner or again, find financing, find employees, find other people that, that you can work with. And then there are accelerators and incubators. So if you just do a search in your local area for business accelerator, business incubator, entrepreneurship accelerator, entrepreneurship incubator, whatever. They're basically programs that are designed to help entrepreneurs and new business owners fund and grow their business through various resources, including mentorship. So it's a great way to sort of get your foot in the door with the idea that incubators and accelerators are automatically designed for people that need help and want to be able to grow. So it's, again, it's funding, it's mentorship. There will be people that work or volunteer in the incubator and accelerator that have ex expertise in various functional areas. So they'll be able to help you out. But also, once again, there are networking opportunities with fellow startups and experienced entrepreneurs. And you never know. Somebody might have some sort of distinction they can help you make that really takes your business to another level. Some people might want to join your cause and maybe work together and build a partnership instead of a you know, solopreneurship or whatever. There are limitless ways that these things can impact us. So we just need to do the outreach and the rest will happen on its own. Then there's also the Chamber of Commerce. Joining your local Chamber of Commerce can provide networking opportunities. They'll do a wine and cheese. They'll do some sort of, you know, um, like uh, meet and greet or whatever with other local businesses and entrepreneurs. They'll host events. Those workshops, seminars, beneficial for networking. The other thing is for all these local groups, another thing that's very valuable about that is if presentations or giving, um, presenting what you're offering or webinars or any of these other things are valuable for your business and your industry and what you sell, whether it is you're preparing to be able to be a public speaker, you're preparing to be able to do webinars online, you're preparing stuff for that, or maybe you want to add public speaking to part of your repertoire, what better place to practice than in front of a small chamber of commerce meeting or a small local networking meeting? You know, you don't want your first venue to be a 3,000 foot auditorium where you stand up on stage and you're like, uh, and you're petrified. So you can hone your presentation. You can do, give your presentation, give your talk, and then reach out to people afterward and ask them what they thought, 
What things could you do to improve it? What things could you, you know, you could also videotape that and you could use the video in your own promotional material because now it shows that you're presenting. It gives you instant credibility. When you start to think about all the ways you can do this, you start to recognize that there's so many ways to benefit your own business and grow from being involved. It's super, super important. Each of these resources offers unique opportunities and environments for networking. It's beneficial to explore a mix of them and try to grow your network effectively. The takeaway here is that whether networking and connecting with others is a skill that comes naturally to us or not, it's a vital skill and activity for all entrepreneurs. And I say skill and activity because the ability to network is one thing. Actually doing it and building a network is another thing. And that is the more important thing. So whether it's a natural skill or not, we need to develop our network. The challenge is we may not think about how much we need a network until we really need it. And at that point, it's too late because it can't be built overnight. The smart way to approach it is the slow and steady and continuous and start building a network before we need it. Join groups, connect with other entrepreneurs, go to events, listen to their challenges, offer advice. Then, when we're in a position of need, we'll be able to get the help and support that we need also.